Good morning. The sun is shining. The wind is providing a light breeze. It's a perfect day to go paddling on the Wapsipinikin River. I've got my canoe out here ready to go. A little bit of fishing equipment that I don't know if I'll even use it. Water bottle and a banana and some camera equipment. So uh, I think we'll take off and go up the Wapsipinikin River for a while. Uh, when I first got here, there was an American white pelican swimming around by the dock. I did get some pictures earlier, and I will try to get some when I get out on the water, if I get close enough, but I'm not going to push it too hard since it's passing through. Uh, but anyway, it was a good start to the day, so even if I don't see anything else, I've already seen a pelican. Let's go out on the water and let's see what I can find today. I had hoped to get started a bit earlier today, but um, had to water trees. It's supposed to be really warm again. No, it's supposed to be hot. And we got a little bit of rain last night, but not enough to get by. So I've been up for a couple of hours watering trees. You might see the pelican up there in the distance. I'm not trying to harass it, I just want to go that way. My thought is I'd head up the river ways today. Maybe go to the old bridge. We'll see. Pelicans tend to be rather tolerant. So maybe I'm not gonna be bothering it too much. I certainly wasn't expecting to see a pelican today. Heron, yes, great blue heron, and green herons, yes, but not a pelican. These are exposure challenges because they're so bright. But I think I got something. I'll let it be. I do want to go in that passageway though. Well, there was a great blue heron and a green heron. I saw where the green heron went in that tree up ahead. Nope, took off already. We have several green herons out here this year. If you've seen my earlier videos, I've wondered if there's a net was a nest somewhere. We just normally don't have this many. The area in front of the cabins is also known as Indian Pond. And we often have birds passing through there. Swans, bald eagles, pelican. You never know what you're gonna see there. I don't know if you're noticing it or not, but the leaves are starting to change colors rather quickly. Yep, we're in the last third of August, but still, I'm not ready. Can we not have some more summer?
I don't know where that green heron went, but obviously I missed it. When the weather guys tell you it's supposed to be in the low 90s, that's a good idea, a good suggestion to get out early. I don't mind sweating, but 90's miserable. Even now, it's plenty warm. I put a shirt on only for the videos. Otherwise, it's warm enough to just be out in shorts. This isn't very deep back here, but I often see things. This is where I saw four green herons one night. I think it's safe to assume they might still be back here. If there was a nest here. So far the sun is so bright it's blinding me. Probably wouldn't see them if they were here. All right, we'll work the edge. Yep, there was one. Some wood ducks. It's really shallow back here. That's good habitat though. Yesterday I went to Burlington along the Mississippi River in southeast Iowa and I threw this canoe in so I could maybe go paddling in the backwaters. But I had a unfortunate surprise in that there are no public accesses for any of the sloughs at least not close to Burlington, like there are when you go up to New Alban and Prairie du Chien and Marquette McGregor and Guttenberg area. In Northeast Iowa, we're, we're really blessed with easy access. Down there, not so much. I was surprised how much the personality of the river had changed from the northern corner to the southern corner of Iowa. See anything in here? I do not. See carp moving. We'll be going to another spot where I often see more wildlife than in others. More bird life anyway. Then I'm gonna start wandering wide here as we approach since things are moving around so much this time of year. Maybe it's my imagination, but it seems like I can see the the critters almost getting itchy for the migration. We're seeing some that have moved in already, migrating in. Some are gone. You can just sense the, the change coming. The older I get and the more I'm out, the more I recognize it. There's a green, nope, that was a wood duck. There is a possibility I'm going to have to get out and walk here, and I'd rather not. I 
I'm gonna go where I remember the water to be the deepest, even though it's shallow. All right, way up in front of the canoe is that little shorebird that I believe is one of the sandpipers. Oh, shoot, it's too shallow. I can't get there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to even get close enough. situations where I get as close as I can and wait for the bird to come to me. The lighting is not good though this way. If I'm lucky, I'll get out of this be able to turn around. Uh-oh. Water's cooled off already. I don't think I'd want to go swimming today. It's not very warm. I shouldn't have to go too far here. I only need a few inches to float this canoe. But I don't have it here. The issue is, I don't like to put all this water in it when I put my wet feet in it. I know, most people don't care. But most people don't have this camera equipment in theirs. Alright, I'm back in business, I think. Well, so far the wildlife, other than the pelican, and maybe that black and white warbler. Maybe. Otherwise, the wildlife has pretty much skunked me. I'm seeing it from a distance, but not close enough for photos. That's the way it is sometimes. So I'll keep on it. Oh, there's another green, green heron flying into this backwater. All right, I'm going to stop talking and start, see if I can get to it. green hair and flew up into this stuff on the right. Not the front part, but further back. So let's see if we can find it. And there's a lot of cedar wax wings flitting around.
lighting isn't that good, but I can make it work. It's better than being skunked. I didn't know what I was going to come across today, but I should have named this video The Hunt for the Green Heron, because you've got to see how challenging it is. And we came to some sort of an agreement here. I got a decent green heron picture, and I also got that pelican picture. So if I get nothing else today, so be it. But I know that that heron flew up on, in these trees here, this maple. And possibly better light. Oh, he's on that. He's on that dead branch sticking up. You're not seeing it yet, but you will. He's not in the maple. He's behind the maple. And I don't know if I can get a shot or not. We'll see. Okay, he flew. That's a pileated woodpecker. We'll keep going up the river here a ways. They have all morning until it gets so hot that I don't like it. You might wonder why do I shoot so many pictures when all I need is one and usually all I share is one or two. And I'll explain that in that when the bird is moving or I am moving, every little change in, in perspective affects the final image. So on that green heron, I really didn't want that busy background behind it. And I don't know if I got a decent one without it. I know it if I did, the bird might not have been looking at me. So then I have to decide during the editing process, do I keep that image or don't I? Whereas if I've got many to choose from, the likelihood of, of having captured the, the best view increases. So I shoot a lot, I edit them down, and then I share the best. So if you're wondering when I edit, first thing I look for is is the are the eyes in focus if the eye is not in focus it's almost almost a certainty not quite but almost a certainty that the picture will not be usable and it'll get deleted if the eye is in focus and the rest of it isn't well you can tolerate a lot that way um, but if that eye isn't out isn't focused very very almost certain it'll be out as for exposure I can do a lot with exposure um, correcting the exposure because maybe I want to maybe I want it you know well lit maybe I want like the pelican I had to adjust that so that the background goes dark and really I kind of like that um, so you've got a lot of variability there but that focus not so much and certainly composition hardly hardly anything there so I shoot a lot and like I said, I edit and keep the best. Up here I see some touch me not or jewel weed. That's a good fix for if you get into stinging nettles. This is the first I've seen it blooming this year. Seen lots of nettles, but I haven't seen the jewel weed. Let's see if I can even get a decent shot with this long lens. This is an example where I'll have to underexpose because of that black background. Yeah. 
and the flower is moving in the wind the canoe is moving the light is changing with shadows so for that reason I shoot many and I hope for one and yeah I can look at the back of my camera and kind of get an idea if I got something but still it's not it's not as certain as when I look at the computer and really get to study it large. Let's keep moving upstream. I don't have a whole lot of water left, so I don't know how much further I'll go before I float back. There's some backwater coves in here too, but with the low water levels, I don't know that I can even get through them. In fact, I don't know if I could get through this with a boat. Canoe might be iffy, so I'm not even going to try to get into them other ones. I don't feel like waiting in them. Then I know I'd scare everything away. Yep, it'd be tough to get up here with a boat. We've been two or three years now without much water. Hence the drought. In fact, I got a pontoon boat I haven't stuck in the water for several years. Which is a bit disappointing. I'd like to pull the grandkids in the tube. But I can't destroy an outboard or the pontoon. Really busy kingfisher up there. And if you see it, that's a male because it doesn't have as much color on it. Oh, there's a second one that just caught something in the water. If you think green herons are hard to get pictures of, Close pictures from the canoe. Kingfishers are even worse. Every now and then I luck out, but not very often. Oh wow, this is really shallow here. Hmm. It's been a long time since this has been so shallow you can't get through it. What you hear me doing is taking my paddle apart, using it like ski poles. Push my way either forward or backwards through the shallow areas. This canoe and this paddle, the combination are not my, what I would call the ones that I really are careful, super careful about not scuffing up. That's a different one, different set that I don't bring out when I'm going up the river like this. Just because I want to be able to go in, maybe, maybe things will get scratched, maybe not, I try not to. And I might need to push against the sand. So that's what this one is for, and it works great. While I had the camera not recording, I may have captured a photo of a kingfisher. If I did, I'll share it. In fact, if I have any pictures other than what I'm sharing during the video, I'll add them at the end, but I make no promises. I never know until I'm at home sitting at the computer. Up ahead. There might be some birds on the one on the ground. Oh yeah, there's the first. There's a heron and there's something to the left. I don't know what that is. That looks like a hawk. I don't know if they're gonna let me get pictures or not. I can try from here. Oh, 
in the water even. They're warm. Like me. I actually want it to fly away so I know it's not caught in fishing line. unusual for it to sit this long. drying off out up on the branches. It's got its wings spread out. Boy, I have never seen this so shallow. The mics might be picking up the road noise. That's the highway if I can get to it. Not sure I will. So far I've made it up to the new Highway 63 bridge. My thought was, if nothing distracted me, that I would try to make it all the way to the old 63 bridge. And we'll see, between critters and water conditions, I may or may not make it up there. It's really hard to believe how high this water can be and how low it can be, the extremes. I don't know if I will get through this or not. I think so. It's hard to tell though. Yeah, I don't see anything too close to the surface. Oh, I wasn't going to do wildflowers, but I see an interesting scene as I went through there. If I do my lighting correctly, if I can get close enough from here. I don't know. I'm looking at those cardinal flowers up ahead. We'll see. Is that not like a natural bouquet thanks to Mother Nature? 
In case you're wondering how I'm doing this, I have a GoPro on a clamp um, pinched on the front thwart of the canoe. I use voice commands to turn it off and on. And then I'm shooting my still photos with an icon. When I shot the Pelican photo at the beginning, if, assuming it turned out, when I shot that I did have it on a monopod. Otherwise I've been hand holding. Takes practice. And I do carry an extra insurance policy on my camera equipment, and I have had camera equipment destroyed. Uh, but it does take practice. However, the payoff is that you get to see a whole lot of things that most people don't get to see, or you see things from a very different perspective. Not only that, when you're out on the water, the bugs don't bother you, and I think you can tell from the shoreline habitat that I'm in. If I was walking the shoreline, the bugs would be terrible. So that is how I do it. Oh, I suppose I should add too, today I'm paddling an, um, an old town Discovery 119 Sportsman. It's a solo canoe. We have a new tree down here that's messing things up for getting it further up the channel, I think. As you saw, I was done there, not quite to the old bridge, which is fine. I got to see quite a bit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paddle back, um, but instead of recording at regular time, I'm going to put my camera on hyper speed, hyper time lapse, and condense it down, and I'll add that to the end of this video. I will stop for photos if, if anything warrants. I may, may even cast a time or two. Um, and I don't know if I'll have pictures to add to the end or if I'll put them all at the beginning, but um, watch it all the way through. And if there are, there are. I do thank you for watching. If you like this kind of stuff, I encourage you to subscribe. Um, but I do, I do uh, appreciate you watching, and I thank you for watching. I gotta get turned around here. Or you gotta get get situated so I can stop and put the camera in hyperlapse.
I've made it back to the cabin and only did one stop and that was for another green heron in about the same area where I saw them coming up or when I paddled up the river. It's warm. No, it's getting hot and it's humid. So I'm gonna call it quits. I'll uh, add any still pictures that might be worthy of adding that don't go into the main video. And again, if you're stuck with me this long, I do thank you for watching.